What's going on, everybody? Jeremy with Detroit Tech. Steel Series revamped their top end wireless headset. So I wanted to just revisit the Logitech G Pro X wireless headset to see if it's something people should really even consider buying nowadays. We even did a review of the Steel Series Arctis 7 a while ago. You can check that out over here. And as good as those were, do the G Pro X wireless even compare? Let's take a look. As we dive in, we'll have the products listed in the description below if you're interested in buying and, you know, obviously, of course, get subscribed as well. We've got some great content coming up as we ramp production back up for the channel. So let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, these are the shroud version of the headset. Call me a sip if you will, but the shroud version was cheaper than the regular ones when I got them on Amazon. The only difference is the graphics on the ear cup and like the graphics on the bag. Otherwise, exactly the same as the non-shroud version. In the box, you get the headset, uh, the bag, soft fabric, ear cups, the detachable mic, and the USB dongle. Technically it comes with a foam windscreen for the mic too, but my cat is a cat and destroyed it. So that's, you know, fun. You may not like the cables hanging outside the ear cups, but I'm a fan of the look. Reminds me of the DT990s that I have. The padding on the headband isn't super thick, but it's firm enough that they're actually really comfortable on the top of my head. My head is a little bit on the large side and I don't quite extend the arms like all the way out. So there's room for people with heads even larger than mine. They do have pretty decent clamping pressure, but I have yet to really get a headache with them and I've done some pretty long sessions with them as well. And they feel fine with my glasses too. I like, you know, the full leather on the ear pads that come installed. They provide a bit of a better seal than the fabric ones though. The fabric ear pads are a bit cooler over time, temperature wise. Anyway, overall, it's a pretty comfortable headset. The left ear cup has the power switch volume rocker or volume knob, whatever, mute button and the USB-C charging port, thank you. And the jack for the removable mic. It's a small thing, but I don't like that the volume rocker controls the system volume on the computer. The Arctis 7 had their own like separate volume. Like the computer is at 100%, you could just turn the headset down and that didn't change the output from the computer. It, honestly, it probably doesn't matter. I just like to keep my system volume at 100%, get the full output and then adjust each device's output from there. I doubt many people really care about that the way I do, but it, I mean, it's just something to think about. Sound wise, they're fine, really. And, and actually, honestly, they're pretty decent for a headset. Dedicated music listening, I'll take my DT or DT990s, HE4XX, SR80Es over these any day, but they do get loud enough and they don't fall apart when there's a lot of information. I use uh, Welcome Home by Coid and Cambria to test that. Once the whole band comes in, it's a pretty big test to see if the drivers can handle a lot of information, especially in kind of mids and low mids. With the G-Hub software, you can adjust EQ to tailor it a bit. If you're a bass head, you can use the bass boost preset. You'll get pretty close to what you want and it won't be too flabby or anything like that. Tuning the EQ won't necessarily make them amazing, but they'll do, especially if they're really the only pair of headphones headset you can buy. I would say they're a little, I don't know, kind of, it's a little forward in the upper mid area, call it around one to 4K, which is actually pretty good because that's where transients for like footsteps or something tend to sit in FPS games. And with the software, you can use the FPS preset to boost it even a bit more to really hear other teams walking around you. They also have a surround sound mode and this tracks with what I've always said so far. One, don't even think about it for your music. It's just terrible. If you're watching a movie or something, it's not really as bad, it's not terrible. To me, it just doesn't seem so much like surround sound as the like impression of surround sound. The test they have available in G-Hub sounds pretty good, but in practice, really just more of a novelty than anything else. But how's the surround sound in game? I mean, solid meh. Basically turns the volume up and adds some reverb. Again, you get the impression that there's like maybe surround sound, but I'll just never use it. I've never tried a software surround sound trick that I've liked. It'll need to be something super, super special for me to actually care about it. The microphone is nothing to really write home about. I think the wired version has a slightly better microphone, probably just because of like bandwidth issues for this being wireless. The good news is the software, about the only time I say this about peripheral software, you can enable the blue voice and you'll be able to adjust three band EQ and a bunch of other controls that, you know, de -esser, compressor, noise reduction, a couple of other ones. I never quite got it to sound the way I, I really, really wanted it to, but the way I wanted it to sound is like my blue spark microphone, which is like 
$200 XLR mic that actually sounds pretty good. So I was never quite going to get there, but I use my Blue Spark to communicate when gaming. If you use a separate mic too, you can take the adjustable mic right off the headset and stow it. Or if you're like me, you can leave it in and enable the side tone. Since these have pretty good sound isolation, the side tone lets me hear myself. Otherwise I would just be yelling. My big issue with the Arctis 7 is the side tone never quite got loud enough for me. I had to run it at 100% and it's still like, I could still barely hear myself. With these, I run around 80% or so and it's loud enough for me to have no problem hearing myself. It really helps me stay quiet when I do some you know, evening gaming and the baby, possibly the wife, is asleep. The big reason I want to get these, the wirelessness of it. I'll start with this. If you're a streamer and want to get these with like the Go XLR or something, it basically won't work at all. You need to, essentially you need the Steel Series headsets to have a separate puck with an audio out. But if you don't need that or are using like uh, the Beacon Mix Create, these will work actually pretty great. Just plug the dongle in, you're ready to go. Having the software helps, it's just, you know, normal install. For my uses, the wireless range is pretty good. The signal does pop in and out a little bit when I go to my kitchen, which I'd call it maybe about 20 feet away, but there are at least three walls and a refrigerator in the way when it starts to drop the signal. If I run to the bathroom, which is kind of like across the hall and like two feet down uh, from my office, I have yet to drop a signal, even with the door closed. So they do exactly what I need them to do. I can run to the bathroom and kitchen in between games and still hear my buddies telling each other how much they, you know, who sucked more in the last game, who beat who, and who has to take a shot. Battery life is rated for 20 hours on the Logitech website. And while I didn't do like a stress test, I 100% believe them. I don't have a lot of time to game anymore, but I can get a few hours in throughout the week, a couple hours in on Saturday, and I'm still at 75% battery. They've lasted a whole day at a LAN party at a friend's house with battery life to spare too. And if you happen to run out of battery, you can plug them in and just keep playing with them plugged in. It's really, really solid. All in all, this is a super solid headset. It's pretty expensive considering I got them for about 200 bucks, but your mileage may vary. I think last I saw them for around like 190 or something. There are definitely better sounding microphones out there, which is pretty, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty silly considering Logitech owns blue, but they clearly didn't use them for the actual mic capsule. It just seems like they use blue for some consultation about what a compressor is supposed to do or something like that. But for my use case, I just need to hear myself and I only use it for the occasional LAN party. I do take them to work too, but again, I don't really use the microphone really just to listen to meetings since they're wireless. So if you value mic quality above all else, you can go cheaper and get a better mic. The Razer Black Shark V2 series has actually a pretty good mic and the X version is generally well under $100. But if you want a single dongle, not like a puck like Steel Series, and good wireless range with nice loud side tone, which is awesome for me again, these would be a good pick for you, especially if you'll use them to listen to music. They won't blow your socks off, but they handle pretty much everything well enough. You know, it's not a strong answer, buy or don't buy. 200 bucks is a fair amount of money to tell people just go and buy this. There are other wireless headsets that are cheaper and pretty comparable in what they do. If you really like Logitech stuff, these are probably what you should get if you're in the market at this price point. If you like Razer better, go with something they offer. Same with SteelSeries, but the G Pro X wireless, it's a solid pick and I doubt you really have any buyer's remorse. Thanks for watching everybody. If this review was helpful, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Let us know in the comments what gaming company you simp for and we'll catch you in the next one.